Acoustum? Acoustum? No, 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 no. Acoustum. Yeah, it's a weird name. Uh, basically, it's uh, they are a uh, Japanese audio brand which specialize in making um, single dynamic ear uh, driver earphones uh, with some quite interesting results. Uh, but today, we'll be looking at one of their entry-level offerings, which is the Acoustone HS1004. Yeah, not exactly a name that just uh, rolls off the tongue, huh? But well, let's get into a review of the Acoustone HS1004. Yeah, I've owned this for uh, quite a few years now, so it looks a little beat up. Excuse me for that. But uh, yeah, we got a square-ish bl black looking box. And it consists of an outer sleeve with um, quite a lot of text. As well as like different types of marketing blurbs and all that. And the Acoustoon logo on the top. So when you slide out the outer sleeve, you're presented with this inner box. It has this sort of texture, of course, the Acoustone logo on the top, and it opens with a magnetic flap to reveal the Acoustone HS1004. Uh, it's presented like this to sort of follow like the music note theme, I guess, as you can see. Below that layer is uh, this here, you've got basically Acoustoon's ear tip lineup. This is the, um, let me see, this is the AT, A AET06, AET07, and AET08 in their respective SML sizes, small, medium, large. A very nice variety of actually. Uh, thanks and props to Acoustoon. I don't use these on my HS1004, but they are quite a valuable addition to anyone's IM collection because they work quite well with a lot of different earphones. And below that, you have the instruction manual, uh, both in English as well as in Japanese. And of course, how could we forget the warranty again? In Japanese and English. The box you get this really nice solid and round case. It's got this like textured grippy feel. It's a hard case as you can hear and as we open it you can see it has ample space for your HS1004 as well as the fact that they include some ear hook guides for if you want to wear the HS1004 in the over ear style. A really nice case from Acousto. Props to that, this as well. This is yet another really nice unboxing experience. You get a good amount of accessories and the high quality case is also very welcome. Um, I guess it's not as impressive as the Ibeso IT01 unboxing experience because the IT01 sort of did the same thing but for less money. Uh, but, you know, the HS1004 unboxing experience includes all that you need in terms of accessories and the components that are included are of high quality given that you got the whole Acoustone AET family of ear tips and they were all presented with a premium feel so, you know, really good, I got nothing wrong with it. Props to Acoustone. Well, since the Acoustoon HS1004 doesn't have detachable cables, we're just gonna look at the whole thing here. So, starting with the body. This housing seems to be your uh, standard bullet-shaped earphone design, and it's meant to be worn down the ear. I do like the silver metal ring, but um, the angular design plus the this sort of um, engraved Acoustoon logo. It kind of looks a little busy, to be honest. And combined with this sort of stubby nozzle, as you can see, it's not really the most comfortable or tight-fitting thing to wear. So the fit itself is kind of average at best. 
And then the cable on this thing, um, it's like a fabric, yeah, it's a fabric covered cable affair. And the best I can say about it is that it's not microphonic, it doesn't harm the sound, and it's light. But otherwise, ugh, yuck. As with many fabric cables, it sort of kinks weirdly. And uh, over the years, as you can see, it has started to sort of fray at the jack end. Not really nice. You also got the Y splitter over here made of plastic. But yeah, I'm seeing fraying. I'm seeing a lot of kinking. Uh, it won't kill VHS-1004 sound, but man, it wouldn't have been my first choice. And definitely not something I would have wanted to be stuck to my earphones permanently. But... It is what you get. All right, so for source matching, well, the Acoustoon HS1004 has a very warm, but also quite punchy and aggressive sound. So I would take a bright source like the LG V20 to uh, give it some extra treble air. I guess an analogy I would use here is listening to the HS1004 can sometimes be like eating this extra rich creamy chocolate right and for a few bites it's nice but it can be overwhelming later on so the LG V20 is sort of like this glass of water or maybe a cup of tea to to balance out that chocolate to like cleanse your palate uh, as for the tips um, I'm using the safe choice here it's gonna be uh, medium size final type E ear tips um, they're comfortable to wear, and while they do soften the HS1004's uh, sound a little bit, it does sound uh, good to me, and I prefer it. Though, because you know the whole AT Tip family, while it's included in the package, um, I find that you know Final Type E tips did work best on the HS1004 after all. And with that, let's get into the sound of the HS. 1004 so come on again. Now this is one of the strengths of the HS1004. It's got a thick, punchy low end that spices up a variety of music with this very nice sort of oomph. Uh, when I listen to uh, Dead Sarah's Weatherman, I can hear the hum of the bass in the track and drum hits are also very well articulated. Uh, Acoustoon, uh, apparently they're using this sort of Mylar coating on this dynamic driver. Mylar is um, that's the stuff that like makes up your eardrums basically. And well, because of that, I think the bass here is indeed very organic feeling, but it's got a fault in that it's kind of sluggish. Um, there's like this lingering decay that it's nice, but in busy songs, the bass can feel like it's slow and lagging behind. Okay, so the mids, um, not great. The HS1004's uh, lower mids are decently warm, but its high mids are recessed, grainy, and it can be a little brittle sounding. It makes for this very uh, pulled back mid range that, although decently intimate, kind of falls into the realm of being recessed. I find that, this, uh, that these mids implementation uh, it works best with rock and light metal maybe 
you know, stuff like older recordings from the 90s and the 2000s. They can bring forth the timbre of the guitars nicely and for vocalists with like these screamier voices, it works very well and it gives the song this nice energy. But for modern music and electronic music, it doesn't do that well. It's sort of, you know, compressed sounding. The treble range of the HS1004 is also just okay. It just about escapes uh, from the realm of sounding like it's lacking air, but it's not really refined or detailed enough to really portray stuff with a lot more, um, I guess, finesse. And again, I find that rock tends to play best. It gives some sizzle to the hi-hats, but sometimes uh, cymbals can sound like they have less of a zing and more like a splat kind of sound. Or it can be like splashy, which I guess depending on your tastes and depending on the song can be a good or a bad thing. This is uh, very much a your mileage may vary thing, I think. Look, being the entry model, I think the HS1004's uh, capabilities have been toned down by Akustun because uh, the sound stage of the HS1004 it's it's below average. I, I I I would say that the way it's handled, it sounds more intimate rather than just being narrow, thanks to the punchy, lush tuning in sports though. So it's all right. Um separation and detail it's also lacking basically if you throw like these very uh, thrashy abrasive sounding stringed instruments to the HS1004 it does quite well it does really well actually but for anything that needs a bit more finesse like a, like a soft piano man the HS1004 just feels like it's rubbing sandpaper on the sound really so usually, uh, I would try to compare the set that I'm reviewing to others that I have which are uh, roughly in the same price range. But I don't think I have anything that is within the price range of the HS1004. Uh, HS so I'll be comparing the HS1004 with the Audio-Technica ATH-E40. Uh, I think both of these sets, um, they have a similar tuning vision but end up with uh, like two different flavors for the implementation. So both of them try to go for this sort of warm and punchy tuning, but the E40, it tries to deliver that with its mid bass and the mids, uh, whereas the HS1004 is more bass centric. So both sets have a similar sound, but the E40 tends to color the song with um, you know, it has much more emotive and forward vocals, which can sometimes sound heavenly, but at other times it, it can also sound honky and shouty. Whereas the HS1004, it ends up being more of a rock and metal specialist, being more suited for guitars, but also at the cost of mid presence. So, again, similar tuning direction, but a different implementation from two different sort of Japanese audio brands. So at the end of the day, the Akustun uh, HS1004, it sort of signifies the old world of hi-fi. You've got these non-attachable cables, you've got a non, uh, you got a traditional uh, bullet style housing, you've got, you know, this housing that deals with um, metals instead of using resin like many sets we have nowadays. And a sound which plays to the genres, I guess, before the age of the internet. So, if you want a cheap entry to the Akustun world, or a set which specializes in rock and metal, then yeah, the uh, HS1004 as well. Um, but if you just want like a general listening set, I would think that a lot of modern KZs, Moondrops, or even Blondes will be more than enough to satisfy your needs and, quite frankly, at a fraction of the price. And, yeah, it's the end of this review. 
Um, so again, as usual, I'll leave links to the songs that I listened to and used in the video description. Uh, I'll put the links to my website over there where you can find uh, other written reviews of other IMs. You'll be able to find some old art projects I had as well as the about page where you'll find a variety of ways that you can donate to me. I'll also leave my Patreon link down there uh, if you want to support me. Uh, for now, it's mostly just for donation purposes, but I will get to adding uh, some rewards in due time. Um, but yeah, if you want these reviews to come out quicker, if you want me to actually have some cash to buy these things to bring them in for review, then um, yeah, that's where you can support me. Um, you can also like this video, you know, subscribe to me if you want to see more of this content. Uh, I also, you know, I also do a lot of like meme videos on a lot of gacha games, so if you want that, there's also that over there. And, um, you know, if you have any suggestions, uh, please leave them in the comments. But otherwise, um, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.